Welcome back, everybody, to Holly Randall Unfiltered. And today I have an old friend of mine who I actually haven't seen in quite a long time. <laughs> so I am thrilled to have him here in the studio, Kevin Blatt. And when you say old, 48 is pretty old, right? No, 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 no. I mean, I'm like, feeling old today. That's why we, I'm saying that. Believe me, I'm going to be 40 in less than a year. So. 40? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I You're know. so much younger than I am. Am I? That's why you look better. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're your fetus. Well, I also have a great doctor, darling. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you and you have a new boyfriend. I do. Well, how I don't know how new is it? We've been dating for a year and about 5 months. Has it been that long already? Yeah, it has. And you like the guys with the beards now, I'm saying. I right? This has become a thing with you. I know. <laughs> better I know. than he's not a writer, is he? Because there's not enough script writers in this town to be. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for one right now, by the way, if you know of any. I am and too, if actually. anybody's actually listening and wants to ghost write or uh, script write with me, I've got a couple concepts that people like, and um, they're sellable. Where can people contact you? Um, well, I'm on Twitter at Kevin Blatt. Okay. I'm on Facebook at Kevin Blatt. I'm at kbizzle.com. K Bizzle and the Hizzle. That's my marketing <laughs> uh, and uh, photo licensing and brokering business. Uh, these days, as I was just trying to tell you, I, I, um, I do a lot of uh, story brokering mm-hmm. for ma- mainstream media. Mm-hmm. So, well, probably, I hate to toot my own horn here, but in the last 10 years when TMZ um, was basically in its infancy, I was selling them a lot of stories. Right. And it became the new porn. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we share that uh, as part of our history. Um, you know, working in the adult business, I always thought it was going to be recession proof. I always thought there was going to be money to be made for years and years and years. And then. Didn't we all? Look, you know, at the bottom kind of dropped out a little bit and it forced a lot of people to reinvent themselves. And everybody wanted to blame the tube sites and blame all the, uh, you know, the proliferation of free content. And yeah, there was all of that. But there was also a lot of criminals in the business mm-hmm. that were still kind of thinking, well, this is going to last forever. With me, I kind of wanted to look for the next thing and kind of make my my exit. Right. And I started seeing where celebrity gossip and news became the new porn. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to know what Lindsay Lohan was wearing or doing or what she was drinking or what she was snorting. And then it became what Paris Hilton was doing. And, you know, obviously my background kind of, you know, intersected with Paris's. Right. uh, Having promoted and put out One Night in Paris, her sex tape. So Which, that kind of made me... of course, me, she had nothing to do with. Of course. Well, it's funny because people ask me this all the time, and I mm-hmm. can say this on the record yeah. um, because I won't get sued by her. Right. Look, at first, she was an innocent, unwilling victim. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the person who initially came to us was uh, Rick Solomon's roommate, Don Thrasher, mm-hmm. who had stolen the tape okay. from Rick. And some people speculated that he kind of had a thing for Rick. Mm-hmm. So I think he was... Kind of jerking it to his roommate. Oh, okay. I was going to say like a yeah. thing, like he had an no, out for Vic, or th- he had like a. I think like he was kind of in love with him. For, oh, how weird! You know what I mean? Kind of like a bisexual kind of weird thing. Yeah. But anyway, um, he watched that tape more, I think, to see Rick naked than to see Paris naked. <laughs> but he came to us, and, and we paid him fifty thousand dollars up front. You know, he said that he owned the rights to it, which we kind of knew he didn't. Yeah. But it was a publicity stunt, right? You know, very much like Pam and Tommy Lee, when Seth Warshawski from Club Love put that out, he. He intimated that he had a sex tape and he was going to put it out at such and such date and such and such time, fully thinking he was going to get a cease and desist from Pam and Tommy, which he never did, mm-hmm. which kind of tipped his hat and he said, you know what, I'm going to do it, Yeah, which he did. He really never got sued. I mean, he got sued, but he never settled for millions and millions of dollars. They, they to this day, have never made a dime on that sex tape, which really? most people don't know. Uh, in the case of Paris, of course, when we put it out, and again, I get credited with being a part of probably the world's first viral video, which was the clip of the Paris Hilton sex tape, in the dark with the infrared, you know, green-tinged yeah. x-ray vision. Mm-hmm. And I sent that to two people. I sent that to my contact at E and my contact at Us Weekly. Mm-hmm. And from there, it became the video clip seen around the world because everybody wants to impress their boss. Right. Everybody wants to say, hey, check out what I have. Let me show you something, mm-hmm. Right. You have naked pictures of Aria Giovanni over here, right? So you're like, hey, let me show you a picture of Aria Giovanni naked on a couch. Uh, Everybody wants to be the first person to see that. So they sent it to their producers, the producers sent it to somebody, and then they sent it to somebody, and before you know it, it it became this huge, huge thing in 2003. It was probably the biggest news story of 2003, looking back at it. Yeah, absolutely. And it got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of heat. 
So now I have a question because there's a couple of things that that I understood to be true. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes. Don't you have to have the models sign off on a model release and provide IDs and everything to be able to distribute that um, for profit, like distribute it through like a legit distributor? So Mm -hmm. those sex tapes like the Paris Hilton Mm -hmm. tape, um, the Kim Kardashian tape, uh, the... um, uh, Vern Troyer, no. Uh, China... Yeah, um, they Tom all Sizemore. had to sign model releases. Of course, so I mean, they you were know better than anybody. To- That's what I thought. You sign releases with every one of your models. I signed a release to be on your broadcast today. Yes. So why wouldn't that hold true with any other thing that you would buy in a jewel case? So these things, so they were all complicit in this as much as they would go and do these press junkets and say, oh my God, I can't believe my sex tape's out there. I'm so ashamed someone stole it from me. I feel mm-hmm. so violated, blah, 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 blah. Well, like I was saying, at first Paris was, she had no idea. She was in Australia when the whole thing happened. She had no idea that people were actually looking at this sex tape of hers, which obviously had to be devastating for her. So how did it get out then? Because well, obviously you didn't have re- paperwork on her. We did not have paperwork on on it and uh, it wasn't supposed to, it never went up on the website which was sexbrat.com at that point Right. so what happened was we got all this notoriety and all this publicity, people came looking to sexbrat.com to see the clip which we did not host at that time Mm -hmm. and that was primarily what we wanted was just a lot of traffic to the website Um, because I sent out those two clips somebody sent it out to somebody who put it up online and then it became this thing that was passed around Uh, never intentionally wanting to do that. And then, because it was just a short little clip, and it was x-ray vision, so it wasn't really like graphic and, and uh, 1080, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Right, 4K. Or was shot in 4K. Yeah. Um, you know, people wanted to see more, and they wanted to see more. Before you knew it, there were all these websites in Australia and Malaysia and offshore that were touting that they had the full video in their members area. And if you joined for $200, mm-hmm. you could get full access to this thing. Well, guess what? These were guys banging credit cards back then. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the content. And try charging back to one of these places back in the day. Yeah. People didn't even realize that when you gave your credit card, they had no idea what they were going to be in for. 90% of them forgot they even did it because they were high out of their minds or yeah. drunk when yeah. they said, I want to see Paris Hilton getting banged. Yeah. Um, This is the Wild West days of the internet. Yeah, I mean, it was the days where everybody made a lot of money, unfortunately. You know, uh, people would sign up for a membership, $29.95 a month, forget they even had the membership, and because we're lazy, cheap Americans that pay the minimum on our credit cards, never bother to see this charge from American telecom might have been (laughs) a porn site. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, eventually what happened was Paris and Rick started seeing where everybody were making millions of dollars off the rights of publicity of both of their names. Right. And they said, why don't we just put out our own tape? Yeah. So, again, you know, this is part of one of the things I want to put in in my screenplay. Right. (laughs) But it's kind of showing what really happened. And I'm working on a short film right now called KB in Paris. uh, Paris and me, actually, it's called. And it's it's a short film because it's more of a tongue-in-cheek look at fame. Mm -hmm. You know, one person's infamous, that person being me, and another person's famous. Mm-hmm. So she gets a million dollars to DJ in Japan for an hour and gets a million dollars to sell cryptocurrency, a million dollars for this appearance, a million dollars for that appearance. I rent in Toluca Lake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, I helped this woman become one of the most famous people in the world if she's become this juggernaut like the Kardashians. Right. And yet, you know, here I am over here. I mean, I do okay. I'm not going to say it. I'm not. I yeah. don't. I'm not living on a ranch in Malibu. I'm not, yeah. you know. But it, 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 like I said, one woman's rise to fame became another man's rise to infamy. So now I'm making a living today intercepting a lot of really big tapes and also selling tapes to private collectors. Now, she also was on, this came out right before she had that show, The Simple Life, right? That's right. So was that part of the publicity stunt? No. Not it at just all. So happened it was just to pure be coincidence. pure coincidence, which okay. is so nuts because had we known, I mean, I would have planned the publicity a lot different for Sex Brat. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just dumb luck. But because of that, people speculated, oh, well, she must have had her hand in this. Oh, she's a brilliant marketing person because mm-hmm. she knew that this Fox television show was coming out. Listen, when someone came to me and said they had the Paris Hilton tape, I said, who the hell's Paris Hilton? <laughs> and then I remembered when someone said, oh... Yeah, it's that girl, she hangs out, and, and I remembered her falling out of a car at mm-hmm. the Standard. And you know who she was with that day? Wasn't she with Kim Kardashian? Juliet Carriaga. 
Oh my god! Who's my favorite of all time? By the way, we oh, were talking wow. about the old girls from back in the day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I ran into yeah. her old her ex husband surfing in Malibu. Oh, I was surfing in Malibu. Yeah. I was just learning to surf. Not the guy that got thrown in jail, but the other guy. I don't know. She'd been married. Oh a couple yeah, yeah, times. no, 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 not right, that right, guy, right. not that guy. Not I the remember guy from because National Lampoon. Right, right. Because yeah. I went to her baby shower. I was there with you. Shower? The house that had the elevator that Katy Perry bought after. Ye- yes. Yeah. What was it? A, I can't even remember. Was it a baby shower? It was a bridal shower. It was a bridal shower. Yes. Because she doesn't have. Kids. She never had a baby. Okay. All right. But if she wants to have a baby, <laughs> I know a few people that would probably want to have a baby. She was her. gorgeous. By the way, oh, yeah. for people listening who don't know, Juliet Cariaga was Penthouse Pet of the Year. Millennium. Mo- oh, 2000. Ooh, millenn- oh, right. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, what year was that in this yeah. 2000? Well, man, I, I had an encounter with her in Vegas that to this day. <laughs> yeah, can <laughs> you like, talk about it? It's in my highlight reel. I, I could. I don't think my fiance would like that very much. Okay. Oh, you know? understood. Yes, yes. Understood. But we'll always have Vegas. We'll yeah. always have Vegas. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays right. in Vegas unless it's herpes and then it take, follows you home forever. <laughs> yeah. Or HPV these days. Or now they have gonorrhea that's like throat gonorrhea. Have you heard about this? I that's have. become like, like MRSA. It's, it's resistant to all you know, antibiotics. Jesus. So I'm really glad I'm in a relationship. Me these too. Days Me too. Could you imagine us uh-uh. like... I know. I banged so many dudes without a condom. Did you really? Fuck yeah. Ugh. And like half of them in a blackout. Like uh, I don't even actually know how many people I had sex with because uh, before I stopped drinking, I was such a mess. Were any of them really heavy set and owned like giant like, Shut film up, company? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you? Oh, Harvey are we talking Weinstein. About yourself? Oh, Harvey. Wein- I thought you were going to bring up Luke Ford. Oh no, no, no. We <laughs> forgot about him. <laughs> that was a bad chapter of your life. <laughs> it was literally a bad chapter. chapter. It literally was. <sighs> you know. So actually, um, I saw him when I was at Versailles having Cuban food one night. I just happened to be minding my own business, eating that uh, ropa vieja, and all of a sudden, someone knocks on the window. Oh knocks on the God. window. Like, it's dark outside. I look outside, and it's Luke Ford with a long beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, first of all, wait, there's yeshiva bookers that, like, walk up. Yeshiva booker being, like, a Orthodox Jews that yeah. walk to a temple on a Friday night, which is what he was doing. Right. I was, like, spooked. So, for, again, a lot of listeners probably don't know this. So, <laughs> towards the end In her of, blackout phase, she yeah, dated this guy. Literally, he was my bottom. <laughs> so, at the end of my drinking career, right? Because I quit drinking, like, ten and a half years ago. Wow, has it been that long? Yeah, it's been that long. Isn't that nuts? Oof, good for you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so, he was my bottom. And Luke Ford was a blogger. And you should look him up because he was a very interesting character. He was the mad drudge of porn is what they would call him. Exactly. So, he mm-hmm. was the strange guy who had this internal struggle between being kind of addicted to porn and loving porn, but also being this, attempting to be a Jew, but he was actually born a Christian. So A Lutheran. A Lutheran. His dad was right. a minister. Right, but he really wanted to be Jewish, so it was like his struggle to try to assimilate himself into the Jewish community, but he had this obsession with porn, Mm -hmm. and so he had this blog Mm -hmm. where he would go to porn events, interview porn stars. And I was his tipster back then, so that was kind of like foreshadowing to what I do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would give him dirt on all these bad, bad internet people that were stiffing people, and he would write about them that would drive these guys crazy. Yeah, and he so he had like the most widely read blog in the Mm -hmm. adult industry. Like he would just, and he wasn't afraid to talk talk about anybody. No, he'd go after dish. people at Hustler. He'd go after Stephen at Vivid. He went after everybody. <clears throat> everybody. Yeah. He would get his he got his tires slashed a couple of times. He got dropped off in Boyle Heights too once. Did you ever hear that story? <laughs> I'm not sure. The editor of Hustler said, "Hey, I want to take you to lunch." Oh, I think and I do Mike Alba was his name, and he ended up taking him. And they were driving and driving. And dri- they ended up in Boyle Heights or Lincoln Heights. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, uh, let's go. We're going to a restaurant." And they opened the door, and he he got out on the street in the middle of East LA, and they hopped back in the car, and they literally just sped off and kept. And they left him in the middle of the hood. And this is before <laughs> cell phones. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, he didn't have a cell or phone. Or he wouldn't. Yeah, have he a cell drove phone. A van Anyway. For like 15 years, he it did. should have like lasted a year. God, it's like a great van. It, it's probably, it was so ghetto. He was the original bang bus. He was the orthodox <laughs> bang bus. <laughs> yeah, he was a nut. We don't need to talk about him. That was a bad chapter of your life. This it's, is why no. you got. This is why you got sober, and this is why you became the I woman know. you are today. Well, you know what's funny? Actually, honestly, I really don't hold any kind of grudge against him, and I'm still kind of fond of him in a strange way because he. And, and people would say to me, like, how can you, because he used to write about me obsessively on his blog, yes. and people would say, like, how can you allow him to say these things, and how can you not hate him for things, because he wasn't always 
positive towards me. He no. had like a weird like love hate thing with me. And he had a love hate thing with the adult industry too. Yes, you yeah. Know? So and, you kind of you, you were that dichotomy that he needed. Yeah, because he was like, oh, I like her, but on the other hand, she has. This thing, yeah, you know, she like likes to drink, and yeah. she has this evil side. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted to, uh, he wanted me to convert to Judaism for him and like leave the business. Wouldn't have like, been so bad. Are you crazy? Well, the guilt part of the Judaism you could handle. I think you could <laughs> handle guilting people all day long. Yeah, right. Trev, you know, you didn't take the garbage <laughs> out like you said you were going to. I know, right? So, so, but you know, there was. It, I was in this stage in my life, and what I think, because people ask me, they're like, "Why were you attracted to him?" Because he just didn't seem like somebody that I would be into. But you know, I think he had this mystical writer thing that, that I know you that, like. There was that, yeah, because mm-hmm. my father's a writer, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really into writers. I have a right. thing for them, mm-hmm. and also too, I think I was in this place in my in my life where I really felt so lost, mm-hmm. and I and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what my my path was. I I didn't. I was so like I was in such a dark place. Right. And he was kind of in that same place as well. He was also really lost and he was also in this dark place. And so that kind of bonded us together in a strange way. And there was this, you know, he was, he was a very intelligent guy and I was very um, attracted to the intellectual side of him. But I feel like we were kind of both these lost souls floating around in this dark universe or something like that. And I think that's kind of why we had like some camaraderie around that. Um, it's okay, you know what? I was going through that same dark period of my life, and the funny part was we were going, we were in it at the same time. Yeah. Because I remember hearing your vo- your name from Aria and from Amy Sweet yeah. and all these girls that were your really good friends. Yes. All the models and that I'd are. hang out with. And still Aria. And they would all say, you know, I should introduce you to this girl, our friend Holly. Yeah. You guys would get along great. And yeah. I'm like, who? And they're like, Holly Randall. I'm like, you know, I keep hearing her name, but I, I don't know. And then... For whatever reason, we never met each other. Our, our, we never crossed paths. Yeah. And then when I met her, I, I was like, wow, this Holly Randall is really cool. I like her. She's a, she's a cool chick. But it's a good thing we never hooked up. I could tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> because we wouldn't probably be friends today. Right. Although I am I'm kind of friendly with the most girls that I hooked up with. Yeah. Yeah. Just not the last one that sat in this chair a couple weeks ago, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be sniffing the chair when I leave either. But, uh, but again, you know, you sit and talk about holding grudges. Mm-hmm. That's something that I learned uh, without even having to be in the program. Like, yeah. uh, resentment is you know, like swallowing said, poison and expecting the other person to uh, die. The best say, thing right? you can do for yourself is to forgive other people. Yeah, I mean, because look, everybody has issues. Everybody's yes. got their sexual proclivities, as I'm learning in Hollywood yes. these days. Cause, Everybody's doing the best they can with what they've got. Right. But uh, I'll tell you another thing. Everybody's got their secrets. Yes. And... In the last two weeks since this Harvey Weinstein thing started, mm-hmm. the girls that come to me with these stories, and I'm, I've been selling and brokering and, and in some cases intercepting a lot of bad stuff for mm-hmm. some people, it's now become like every actress that read for a role and got hit on is now claiming that they were assaulted or this guy was a scumbag. And I'm not saying that this doesn't happen every single day. Look, yeah. This town was founded on it. Louis yeah. B. Mayer started this shit way before Harvey Weinstein. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's really too bad that this is the way that it is in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But there's still women coming off of buses every single day with mm-hmm. stars in their eyes that don't think it's a big deal to sleep with somebody to get a role. Yeah. So that's what makes it so wrong. Is like if, if there weren't girls that kept coming out here and, and doing it, I don't think a lot of these people would be getting away with 90% of it. They're not right. going to be for very much longer because now it's open season. Yeah. So It's kind of interesting. Uh, my boyfriend actually brought up the fact that, you know, he was wondering what this is going to do in like an HR perspective oh, yeah. to companies because I guess now – because of you know previous like child abuse allegations mm-hmm. generally in schools in a locker room if, if there's like a kid in a locker room mm-hmm. there can't be only one adult there has to be two adults that's weird yeah so just in case we like the one weird, adult, it's very weird right it's and weird it's super creepy age. but like that's kind of the, the law now yeah because of things that have happened before. So is this going to get to a point now where men and women aren't allowed to be alone in a room together for a meeting? Because so. he might sexually harass her. Mm. And then that kind of almost takes the power away from the woman and places them as a victim. I mean, it's just, it's it's horrible. And don't get me wrong, I've definitely been in situations where I've been made to feel that I might have to sleep with somebody to keep my job or to yeah. succeed. I didn't do it, but 
it it's almost like it, it doesn't surprise me. You know what I mean? Let and, me ask and, you this question. In a way, like we women have almost learned to to live with that. How many guys? Just and guys, obviously listening also. How many guys have you ever come across? And no pun intended. That literally masturbate in front of you. Like these people, like this guy Toback, and now they're saying, well, you know, Weinstein it, was dropping his pants in the middle of Cipriani and jerking off into, into a plant. I'm going, who does this? Like, yeah. I've never I mean, just said, hey. Except for on set when the guy's trying to get hard to bang a girl. Have which you ever is seen a guy normal. on a date just whip his cock out no, and be like, never. hey, I'm going to jerk off because you're not going to give me a kiss goodnight? That- I, no, I did have a guy do that to me when I was about seven or eight. Seven or eight? Yeah, on the street. What? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, he pulled up in he pulled up in actually this is kind of like a funny story now <laughs> looking back cuz of my reaction. But so I was by, I was on my little pink Barbie bike and I was biking back from school and this was literally across the street from my house. Yeah. And this guy pulls up I remember he was driving a blue Cadillac and it was a convertible and he had a white flat top. And he pulled up and he asked me where Sepulveda was and Sepulveda was literally a block like right there. And he's like, hey, where's Sepulveda? And I just looked at him kind of strangely because I was like, duh, Sepulveda's right there. And then I said, uh, Sepulveda's over there. And he just whips his dick out and he goes, do you want to suck it, little girl? And you know what I said to him? I just looked at him and went, Psh, yeah, right. And then I just rode away on my bike. Look, I don't get that. Now, what, what, there was some kind of gratification that he gets. I in, guess. In I mean, himself. I can't imagine that he would have expected that I would have said, Yes, but I mean, he probably, I don't know what he wanted. Maybe he wanted me to cry or something like that. But I feel like I dissed him. I was like, I feel like he probably should have said, like, Will you buy me a camera? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, we all have our, our breaking point, I guess. Yeah, yeah. At seven yeah. years old, you didn't know you wanted to be a photographer. No, I didn't right? <laughs> know I would be photographing that one day. Right. I just remember thinking to myself, like, that was the biggest thing I'd ever seen because I'd never really seen like a, a live dick. penis before, I don't think. Saw my dad's when I was a kid, and I was horrified. Yeah, I was like, I've "Dad, you my, breathe through that thing." Or? Dude, I've seen my parents. T- I've seen my dad's dick so many times. Oh my just god! Because he walks around naked, it's his thing, and he has like so many of my friends have seen him naked. But your parents are like old hippies. Yeah, that yeah, were, like, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. He just likes to go skinny dipping. Like wow. he doesn't like to wear clothes, and he's been totally naked in front mm. of my boyfriend a couple of times. Um, which was hilarious to watch his reaction, but it's just like I mean, he doesn't do it like for sexual reasons. It's just how he is. Oh, I get He's it. Just, they're both so like. Well, that's why you became so cool because you're open minded and you've yeah. seen a lot of things and yeah. you've grown up around nudity. So yeah, but I will have to like tell him, be like, Dad, my friends coming over. Can you please, please wear clothes in the pool? I think like, it's cool. And I, I remember cool. when we bought him his first like swim trunks and how like uncomfortable he was with them and how he was just like so <laughs> unhappy and he was like adjusting them all the time. Because before that... <laughs> before that, the balls just flowed free. Well, okay, so he went from... So when we convinced him to, to put some clothes on, um, <laughs> he w- was wearing Speedos, which was still not good enough. Oy vey. You know? And so we talked him into shorts and he was just really, really unhappy about it. Um, no guys ever look good in a Speedo. I don't care if, no. you, if you're Xander Corbis, you're still going to look like a No, goon, it looks right? ridiculous. And I remember once um, I had friends... <laughs> this is a terrible story. I had friends coming over... And, you know, I was like, Dad, I have friends coming over. Can you please, like, go <laughs> make sure, like, when we sit by the pool today that you're not naked, that you put something on? And he was like, okay, sure. And he's like, I'll find something. He goes upstairs. <laughs> and he came down in my bikini Oy vey. I guess it was, like, all he could find. And I don't know. He thought it was, like... <sighs> That's brutal. And it was like the ones with the tie sides, so I guess... But he was doing it for it comic make it, relief as well. I don't think so. I think like he literally thought, like, these will work. Like, wow. oh my God, I almost died. I can't even imagine how horrifying that was. It was been. pretty horrifying. <laughs> I never wore them again, needless to say. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know how we got off on this tangent. It's um, so random. I know, we went from sex tapes to, to Humphrey's dick. To my dad. Which is funny. Yeah, to my dad and my... Oh, I've and never my seen Humphrey's bottoms. dick, so... Believe me, if you hung around my house long enough, you would definitely. I've only see met it. your dad once, though. Yeah, and I think I met your mom maybe twice. Oh, really? I mean, she's a legend. Everybody yeah. knows who your mom is, but yeah. I think I've only met her in person twice. Yeah, so. she's a she's she's a she's different. The colorful family. I like your family. I think it's it, thank you. It's it's incredibly honest. Yeah, and talented. Thank Very you. talented family you come from. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm really lucky. We're all incredibly close. You know, my brother is a lawyer and my sister's a nurse. So, you know, they have very normal jobs. Yeah. And, um, you know, we all live in L.A. And 
we see each other, you know, once a week. Um, my brother actually lives in the guest house behind me, so I see him all the time. You're still in Mar Vista over there? Mm-hmm. I like that little area. I, I still live in the there. house I grew up in. I almost moved there. It's Remember a Sarah great and I looked over there. area. It is, you know, I just know that if, we, if I moved there, nobody would have ever come visit us. Yeah. Because everybody we know lives in Hollywood, and they don't go, they literally don't go west of La Cienega. It's so bad. It's, when you live in your little sector of L.A., mm-hmm. for people listening that don't live here, people don't understand how bad the traffic is, first it, of all. Yeah. And it's become a situation for me where I don't really have to leave my house. I work out of my house. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some clandestine meetings, I have at Green Blatt's or Cantor's where I just came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's about the extent of my driving. Yeah. You know, maybe Century City to meet with lawyers. Mm-hmm. But... Um, if I don't have to be out in traffic, I don't go. Oh, it's the same. My what? doctor in Beverly Hills decides that I have to be there at 8.30 in the morning, though, for an appointment. And I drive from Toluca Lake, which is by Universal. Right. To go 5.9 miles could take you an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Depending on what time of the day you're going. It's insane. I mean, to spend three hours out of your day in traffic to go five miles? It's so infuriating. Sometimes I feel like if I didn't live in L.A., I would get so much more done. Well, Because I just, it'll can take you all day to run, run, run one fucking errand. <laughs> I just was home in Cleveland uh, where I grew up um, about a month and a half ago. I was there for my 30th high school reunion. Oh, and I brought peaches. I missed both of my high school reunions. Well, I was too drunk for the first yeah. one, and I was too grumpy for the second one. You should go to the 30th. That's going to be the one where you're going to go, okay. Because the 10th, you're not really established. You're still kind of the same person you were mm-hmm. in high school, maybe a little more serious. Mm-hmm. The 20th, people are in their jobs. They have kids. They have mm-hmm. families, except for you and I. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the 30th is the people I was with, some of them were grandparents, okay? And now I wake up, and I've got aches and pains and bad back and a bad hip, and I've got this and that. But I don't have a grandkid. Yeah. That to me is just the most hor- horrifying thing ever. Yeah. I've never had a kid. I mean, I have a pug. Yeah. And that's about as close to a kid as I have. Yeah. And that's Sarah's pug that's become our pug. So we're together almost seven years now. Wow. Can you believe that? That's crazy. I know. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Kevin is engaged to Sarah Peaches, mm-hmm. who is a nude model and is just an incredibly wonderful, lovely girl. She is. I adore her. She's the best butt. Out there, so you guys should definitely too. go check her out. I'm and, an ass guy, so yeah, do the math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, if somebody would have said that we were going to be together this long, I would never have believed it. Yeah, you know how I met her. Not sure. It's a good story. Okay. So she was always around the industry. I used to see ads in AVN magazine of her and stuff, and I'd go, oh, "Wow, this blonde! I always love the blondes. Mm-hmm. Blondes, we green are eyes, the best. blue eyes. They're always the most fun. We're the best. Uh, <laughs> but a blonde with a great ass has always been like, my thing. So. Yeah. Um, my brother's doing his first affiliate ball. You know, we used to throw the player's ball. Yes, the player's ball. That was a big thing back in the day. That was a huge day. thing, the and Pimp and Ho parties. The Pimp and Ho parties, mm-hmm. and those were like, and Snoop Dogg used to come. We had Snoop and, and Too Short and Digital Underground would be our ceremonial opening act. Ron Jeremy yeah. would come out and introduce everybody. And it was, yeah. it was the porn business meets hip hop. Yeah. And for one night out of the year, hip hop stars and guys I grew up listening to and idolizing wanted to be us. Mm-hmm. I remember when Too Short walked in in New Orleans in 1999. He walks into the venue and he sees Aria and Amy and everybody. Everybody's dancing. And then he goes, he goes, yo, man. He goes, who are you guys? And I said, I'm, D- I'm K-, K. Bizzle. This is my brother, D. Money. And we're the Blatt brothers. He goes, what? And we're dressed in pimp suits head to toe. Like, not even like costume pimp, like mm-hmm. serious pimp clothes. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I just saw people getting blown in the front row. And people are fucking in the VIP area. How can I be down with you guys? I'm like, well, we're the promoters of the party. He goes, what? I said, we're the Black Brothers. He goes, wait, I was told that two Black Brothers were throwing this thing. Oh, he thought it was Black? I go, you thought it was Black? No, we're the Black Brothers. I'm Kevin. That's Darren. uh, He thought it was Black, but it was (laughs) B-L-A-T-T. Right. That's so funny. So then I looked at him. I go, we are Black. Assalamualaikum. And he just fell out. And ever since that day, we've been really, really good friends. I just left him the other night at this place. And uh, we were just talking about how we first met. But anyway, getting back to Peaches. So we were throwing our first event outside of the adult realm. Mm -hmm. And I'm on stage at the Crown Theater at Rio. And we have three six mafia playing, and all of a sudden, like it was like the crowd parted, and I saw this blonde just staring at me, and she was in this dress, and I was like, "Whoa, that's Sarah Peaches." She walks over to me, and she's like, "KB, how come we've never hung out?" And I said, "Because my ex didn't really like you very much." She goes, "Do me a favor, take my number down. Let's make her hate us." Wow. And I was like, "Done." 
So uh, put her number in my phone, didn't think much of it. I end up in this Charlie Sheen debacle with all these porn stars that were coming to me with stories on Charlie. First it was Capri Anderson. Yeah. I remember that one. And then one. Casey Jordan came That was out when uh, she, he trashed the bathroom, right? Uh, yeah, she, she hid in, in the hotel. bathroom at the plaza. Right, that's what it was. And he, she took his watch and supposedly put it up her cooch. <laughs> stole a Patek Philippe watch. It was a $200,000 watch. <laughs> which I did not believe she did, by the way, for five years. I now am convinced she did it. Really? I am convinced that she did it. Wow. Not because her hoo-ha is that big, but yeah. because... A well, watch isn't huge. It's a pretty big I watch. I mean, look a ba- well, look, a baby can come out of there. That's what I'm saying. You can right? put a watch in there. You can put a watch if babies come out of there. If you can fit Mandingo in there, you can put a watch in there. <laughs> you can't fit Mandingo in me, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you can't even fit uh, Dingo in me. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I ended up going to the Howard Stern show mm-hmm. with uh, Casey Jordan. And that event was like the movie Get Him to the Greek. Okay? <laughs> I'm talking about this drug addled little 89 pound. Thing, yeah, who is so fucking twacked out on coke and alcohol, and I'm going, wait a minute, I just got her all this publicity on TMZ, and she's, you know, she started really believing this hype, and she was loving the press, and this narcissism came out of her. Mm-hmm. But we ended up going to the Howard Stern show. It was 24 hours of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. We get on the plane, we're flying first class, and she's drinking Jack Daniels after Jack Daniels after Jack Daniels. Charlie had given her a rock of cocaine the size of my fist. Two days earlier, which I made her give to me mm-hmm. <laughs> because I told her, I'm like, look, you told me you had two heart attacks already from crystal meth. Yeah. You shouldn't be holding on to this. Let me hold on to this for you. <laughs> which I ended up putting this rock. Here, hold my Coke. Right? I ended up putting this rock in a mason jar. And I hadn't done cocaine in years. Mm-hmm. I, not since I left San Diego. I came home from the Chateau Marmont. I had a little buzz one night. And this was just saying, do me. Mm-hmm. Me. And I took this rock out and I went like this and it was like talcum powder that was glistening and mm-hmm. I'm going, what is this? So I rubbed some of my gums. The next thing I know, my whole face is dumb. <laughs> I'm like, this is unreal. This has got to be the best Coke I've ever put. So I do a little bump and the next thing you know, I'm up going, whoa, I'm actually hungry. Like I've never been hungry on Coke before. Yeah. And I, well, I'm actually horny on Coke. I'm, like, yeah. I'm jerking off. I'm going, what, what is going on here? Uh, two days later, I'm up for two days, and my lawyer comes over, and he sees me sitting there rubbing. I'm, I'm, I'm literally jerking out of my mind, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Keith, I know you don't do Coke, but if you're going to do Coke, this is the best Coke you could ever do. you you got to try this Coke. And he's like, bro, the only thing you should do is quit doing that Coke. And yeah. Give it to me, because this shit's going to kill you. I said, Keith, I don't know what this shit is, because listen, give me a little bit of it. I used to represent Richard Pryor's old Coke dealer. Uh-huh. He could test it and tell you what's in it. I'm yeah. like, done. I gave him like a gram of it. Two days later, I'm sitting in my house. I get this number from an 818 Valley number. I answer, Kevin, this is Rich. I'm like, uh, Rich, who? I'm Keith's friend. I'm like, oh, you're the dude. What the hell is this stuff? Is it heroin? Like, because I was up for three days and I had never felt as good as I felt. From that one bump? No, no, no. I kept oh, okay. doing more. Oh, I, was say, Jesus <laughs> I went Christ. through a couple grams, but uh, I had like 36 grams. So <laughs> he says, Kevin, uh, where did you get this? I said, well, by proxy, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. And he says, well, that makes a lot of sense. He goes, this stuff's been cooked down to the purest form. This is like 100% pure cocaine. Wow. And I'm like, you know, this guy smokes this out of a bong. Like, if you read any of the news back then, yeah. Charlie had this little green monster that he would hit cocaine out of. Yeah. And it was so pure that that's why he didn't die. I was going to say, like, I could never comprehend how he could be an addict for so long and still be alive. Ah, uh, because he had the best drugs. So that's the secret. <laughs> you just need the best drugs, I and then you, you can be the, an addict uh, and live forever. Well, we don't advise <laughs> that people go out there and do drugs, especially <laughs> since we're, we're trying to be on the straight and narrow these days. But um, I called Sarah from New York after. So, so Casey, I'll tell you, a good, this is a good story. And I could tell the story because Sarah knows the story. She doesn't like me talking about it. but So I take her to, to New York. Um, she gets twacked out of her mind. We go to this place called Quality Meats for mm-hmm. dinner. And I call my best friend from high school. Come meet me. I'm with this whore. And we're going to be at Quality Meats. Yeah. She's eating and eating. And I order some ribs as an appetizer. And the ribs come. And next thing I know, she just goes face plants into my crotch. She's passed the fuck out. My friend Cisco comes walking in and he sees in the booth, this big vinyl booth, this blonde's head in my lap like she's blowing me. Yeah. And I'm eating a rib like it's the most nonchalant <laughs> thing because I'm getting peace now because this bitch finally shut the fuck up. Um, 
I dropped the rib by accident in her hair and I just picked it up and put it on the table <laughs> nonchalantly. And he goes, did you just drop a rib into that girl's hair? And I go, Cisco, she's had way worse in her hair. Trust me. And he's like, well. So then at the end, she's unconscious. She's unconscious. And I have to carry her fireman style out of the restaurant. It's 30 degrees outside. She's wearing no panties. And you know she's got that thing. What? She, Vagina? She, it's got its own Twitter. You know, it's a puffy pussy. Uh, oh. I forgot what it's called, but she's got a name to it, and it's got its own Twitter feed. I honestly, I've never shot her. I only know oh. her from the stories like this. That this I've is heard. a big horrifying pussy, by the way. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to talk pussy, this is a hor- <laughs> I, I saw Houston's pussy, so I could tell you that this is, this is didn't, terrifying. Okay, didn't Houston, so for everyone who doesn't know, Houston was a porn star, and she had like the biggest pussy lips in the world. She I promoted the labia of last year. Okay, yeah, yes. she got those, those lips removed, uh-huh. and then didn't she encase them in yes. a paperweight and some guy in Mexico Lucite. bought them? No, Dennis Hoff from the Bunny Ranch bought them. We oh, went on Howard Stern again uh, with two big black security guards and we had handcuffed the briefcase to the wrists and then we did a whole presentation. With, Stern with almost the, threw up. With the pussy lips. He was it. so horrified. They're, they're floating like in Lucite. Oh, God. Like two bacon strips. <laughs> so, anyway, so when it comes to nasty pussies, I can tell you Unequivocally, I've seen it all. Okay, <laughs> labiaplasty. I put Houston's pussy on the tip of everybody's tongue oh, for like a week. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I carry her fireman style out of this restaurant. Back to Casey. So, yeah, and the pussy's <laughs> flapping like right. in the wind. We get back to our little hotel. I say goodbye to my friend Cisco. He goes his way. I look at my watch. It's ten thirty. We have to be at the Stern Show at six. Mm-hmm. She is so fucked up. I'm like, now listen, girl. You got to go to your room. You gotta go to bed, and I'm gonna get you at five o'clock, and we're gonna go to the Stern show. You understand? And she's like, Yeah, Jamie, don't you fucking worry about me, you fucker. I'm like, Okay, listen, I'll see you later. I hit the 11th floor for her, I hit my seventh floor, I go to bed. Ten minutes goes by. Security's calling from the front desk. Oh, Mr. Blatt, are you with um, Courtney Roscoff? That's a real name. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that's, well, I'm not with her, but that's my client. Why? Well, it seems we have a little issue on the 11th floor. Can you come up and meet our security there? I'm like, now what could have fucking happened in 10 minutes that I dropped this girl off? I come up, and I could do the whole forensics for you right now, what happened. She goes into her purse looking for a key, doesn't find the key, so she just throws the purse up in the air. The contents are strewn about in the hallway everywhere. There's lipstick, there's condoms, there's lube, there's dildos, there's everything you can imagine, right? And she's lying, legs spread wide open in this miniskirt with the big puffy pussy flapping in the wind. (laughs) And there's a security guard next to it with a, trying to have a s- serious face. Listen, Mr. Black, I can't let her in the room <laughs> unless you show some some ID. I go, well, go through her shit. It's got to be there somewhere. Well, so Mr. Black, I can't touch it. You're going to have to touch it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to touch it. So I go and I find the ID. I go, look, it's Casey Jordan. We're going to be on the Howard Stern show. Bada bing, bada bang. She wakes up. I get her in her room. I tuck her in. Okay, I'm like that was your mistake. You I'm didn't like walk Jonah her Hill into her room. I walk her in. Well, you're right. This is where things got really bad. Oh no! So I go tuck her in. I go, you okay? I'm okay. I'm like okay. <laughs> uh, I gotta go now. She goes, KB, come here. And she grabs me by my shirt. She goes, you need to fuck me. Oh god! And I go, what? She goes, if I don't have if I don't have an orgasm before I go to sleep, I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep. I'm like, didn't you just have an abortion? Because she was talking about how she had eight abortions. She would go to Portland, where she was from, and have an abortion, knock her out, wake up like it never even happened. That's what, This is how she's telling me the story. I'm going, listen, save this shit for Howard Stern. Yeah. He needs to hear this, not yeah. me. So she goes, I need to come, otherwise I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm like, <laughs> not going to do it. I don't shit where I eat. You're not my type. I go to leave. She goes, oh, really? She goes, you weren't attracted to her at this she, point? She goes, I knew you were a pussy. And I go, pussy, huh? Okay. So I go and I find one of her condoms. I fucking put that thing on. I turn her over. And uh, she goes, come on, Katie. And I'm like, all right. So I go and I stick it in. How did you even get hard? I'm a guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, okay, uh, I'll do what I have to do. So I get hard. Okay. You, I stick it I in. I love your just like your follow through and your determination well, to take care of your clients. Uh, I, I mean, your dedication it's ten thousand dollars if she wins. I get ten percent. <laughs> so I'm a whore. Also, I want to win the thousand dollars in the morning. So uh, I stick it in her. I start banging. I'm like on my third thrust, and I hear, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this bitch is sleeping. I literally just put the bitch to sleep with two pumps. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, what do I do now? So I take it out. 
I take off a condom and I just jerk off on her and I leave. <laughs> and, and I know guys listening are going, yeah, I would have done the same thing. That's, oh my God. And so maybe this is the only time I ever masturbated on somebody. So maybe I'm not too unlike Harvey Weinstein. Wow. But I, 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 I jerk off on her and I put the sheet over her and I go back to my room. Uh-huh. Five o'clock rolls around. My phone starts ringing. It's her. She's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> she goes, KB, you motherfucker. And I go, what? what? You made me do it. You told me I had to bang you before you went to sleep. Otherwise, you weren't going to go to sleep. She says, no, you Superman me. <laughs> I go, excuse me? She goes, you fucking Superman me. I go, I don't know what that means. Well, what is Superman? She goes, you jerked off on my back, and then you stuck the sheet to me like a cape. <laughs> and I woke up with this cape on me. I'm like... Superman me. Okay, I, oh I see the visual now. So again, I tell her. This you is know before what? the song came out, right? So nobody knew what that was. The Superman, and oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we go to Stern. I go, listen, you got to tell Stern that because that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. But you cannot tell Stern that it was for me. Yeah, because uh, I'm thinking I'm never going to get laid again. Yeah. if someone knows I was banging what Charlie was banging. Yeah, because I really didn't bang her. It was yeah. just. Put it in for a second. Uh, <laughs> that she doesn't tells, count. She tells, Just the tip. She tells the stories about. Uh, she tells the story about Charlie, mm -hmm. about the rock of cocaine. She mm -hmm. talks about the eight abortions she gets in Portland, mm -hmm. and then she tells the story how she picked up a guy who supermaned her last night. Mm -hmm. And then Stern's like, "Is that the guy that's out in the green room that's with you?" She's like, "No, that's KB. He's my publicist. They call him the Whore Whisperer." <laughs> Which was probably the most genius thing that came out of her mouth that day, because now I'm known as the whore whisperer. Um, and it, now I take that with me in all my travels. That's when these amazing. girls come to me and they want to sell out people, I have to whore whisper. I have to get their confidence. I'm kind of like you. Mm -hmm. I'm not too much different than you. Mm -hmm. You have to make these girls feel comfortable. Yes. Make them feel pretty, right? Right. Non-threatening. Right. And that's what I do. I'm just like you without the camera. Wow. Yeah, wow, I was right. So that's what I elected to call Sarah up. And I said, listen, I don't care where you meet me. I know you live in Las Vegas, but just meet me anywhere. When I get home, I got to get away from these crazy bitches. <laughs> and I got to be with a real woman. Yeah. And she was like, meet me at my favorite winery in Temecula. And I had no idea where Temecula even was. But the next day, we met up for a date in Temecula. And we've been together ever since. Aww. Is that crazy? We had a romantic great date. In a, Casey in a Jordan scared you into a committed relationship. She not only scared me, I literally was scared straight, like to the point where I was like, I can't be around porn stars. So, of course, I still am with a nude model. Right. <laughs> but of course. She's pretty normal, though. She's very normal. And I know that a lot of listeners that are your friends and both of our friends and people in the industry, they're going to take offense to what I'm about to say. There is something different when you date a girl that doesn't show up to strange sets and doesn't know who she's going to fuck that day. Right. Once you go... That route, there's something I think that's a little bit different about these girls. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I'm not judging. I'm just saying for me, after dating both, yeah, I prefer to be with a girl who, she doesn't even like girls. I mean, she does do scenes with girls very infrequently. I was like, when? Because Not I really like, like a never... scene scene. Like, you know, like faux Faux stuff. Yeah, she stuff. never did like full on girl girl. I didn't. Think. No, just pictures. Like you know. Yeah, well that doesn't count. You stick your tongue next to a box, and you know exactly that. Like like the big space that girls do. But I do think she's a lesbian. Like all you girls deep down inside have a little lesbian in you. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Because look, guys, you know this, right? So. Guys just don't hang out naked with each other. They don't go to the bathroom with each other. They don't well, hold each other's you penises. You guys to go. piss next to each other in the bathroom. Yeah, but we're not looking down at their schlong. When you we're totally are. If we're like in a stadium, a like Cleveland Stadium, circa 1977, where there's like a trough. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'd had to stand next to my dad. That's when I would see my dad's penis and see other penises and go, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Um, but yeah, these days it's not really like that. If you find a guy looking at your shit in the bathroom, you better believe that you know what's going on. You okay? So like, do you? guys really just put these blinkers on you're like i shall not look at another penis oh like, yeah you don't want to look to even just like we will stare straight at the brick in front of us without i mean i like bathrooms where they put the newspaper up over the urinal so you can actually read what's going on in the world as you're doing your thing uh-huh but even if there isn't something there you are standing straight and looking at that spot as if there were well, otherwise you are uh, the creepy guy in the bathroom well what about guys that like sit with each other naked in the steam room that's kind of different but Why? again, I could see, I could see the logic behind asking a question like that. Mm -hmm. I, for one, don't like to sit there with everything hanging out. I put a towel around me. Mm -hmm. I, that's just 
hygienically for me because yeah. I'm a neurotic Jew. I don't <laughs> like to be around too many germs, right? Right. <laughs> and seeing a sweaty penis next to me doesn't usually bother me, but it's so dark with the steam and stuff. Yeah. Doesn't really bother me. Yeah. But again, girls can admire another girl. What's the first thing you do when you meet another girl? Oh, I love the shoes you're wearing. I love that dress. It's always a flattering thing to make the girl feel like, oh, you're so pretty. Right. Or you'll say, oh, you guys, you're so pretty. Yeah. Guys don't go, dude, you know what? Kind of hot <laughs> for a guy. Like, I'd fuck you. They don't do that. Not well, the guys I hang out with. I don't think men need that kind of validation in the way that women do because there's so much emphasis placed on the way that we look yeah. and our appearances. That's like the automatic go to is to yes. compliment someone. On the way they look, but fragile with men, little birds. Yeah. yeah. Well, with men, you're like your more emphasis is placed on your job, how yes. much money you make, the car you drive, like that kind of thing. There's different, like well, what society perceives to be important. Either sex is different, which is why I'm also with Sarah. She doesn't care about any of those things. Yeah, I mean, she would like me to get another car. Since, since my lease was up like eight months ago, I turned in my car. I still have a 2005 Infinity uh-huh. that's been paid off for like 12 years. Yeah. I've been driving this thing around and taking Ubers. Like, who needs... Do you know last month an Uber, again, this isn't a testimonial, I spent like maybe $100 last month getting around an Uber uh-huh. versus a $500 a month car payment plus the insurance plus the gas. Plus the parking. Plus the parking. The parking is insane. Exactly. So it's like, you know what? I don't feel like it's that important to get another car right now. And yeah. maybe that's the cheap Jew side of me. But, no, I hear you. you know, I drove my Volvo, which was paid off for 12 years before I got a new... I just got a new car like last year. I mean, it gets and old. I got a Jeep Grand Cherokee, you know what I mean? I didn't go out and like get a oh. fucking BMW or You're something. You're the millionaire like next door. That's what the millionaire next door drives, the Jeep Cherokee. Or the Jeep <laughs> Did you know that? No. If you read the book, Millionaire Next Door oh, okay. by Robert Greene, It'll tell you all the habits of people that are secretly like very wealthy guys. I'm not secretly wealthy, I well, promise you that. <laughs> they don't usually use their credit cards. They don't like to pay interest on anything. They pay cash for their cars. They drive Jeep Cherokees. I don't actually, said. no, I have I have personal, I don't actually have any business debt at all. I have Good. zero. I've never had any, mm-hmm. which is shocking to me. And I've actually been thinking about getting some. The funny because there's is, some new projects that I want to do that I think I need to fund. Well, and I'm not sure that Patreon is going to fucking no. fund it for me. The podcast, you know, you don't know this could be your juggernaut here. This, well, I'm hoping so. Yes, I mean, I've only been up for like three and a half months, if if even that, maybe three months, and it's it's doing really well, but it's certainly not making any money yet. It's but a tough it's way to still go. early. We did it. Uh, you know, the best co-host I had was Sarah when we would do our shows, mm-hmm. and we were doing it from this place called the Joint Studios. There were a bunch of comics and pseudo-celebrities that had shows over there. Michael mm-hmm. DeBar had a show there, and Ricky Rackman had a show there. It was like I said. Oh, man, I haven't heard that name in a long Z-lebrities, time. Yeah. as I call them. But, um, you know, we like to hear ourselves talk. Yeah. So that was good. The hardest part is getting guests consistently Mm -hmm. because they always flake on you. I've never had one flake on me. No. Nope. That's a testimonial to you. That means they like you. And they drive, like Nicole Aniston drove like two and a half hours to come here. Which was crazy to me. Wow. I know. And you pay her parking. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like why she six, drove in. $16. <laughs> there you go. Here's $16 that's why she drove to spend in. like three hours of your time. Yeah. But you know what? Hey, that's a testimonial to you. That means they like you. You know, you. I was very lucky, but I also found some very interesting guests, like my dry cleaner in Hollywood. I He was the best guest that I had on. <laughs> really? I had celebrities on it, too short on it. I had all these people. They were nothing compared to the guy that I had from my dry cleaner. <laughs> that's he, amazing. He saw this movie that I starred in years ago called American Cannibal. Did oh, you ever I see remember that, that. It was on Showtime I don't think I've seen it, but I, I know it. Well, thankfully, it might be on Netflix next year again Ooh. because the rights are up. The distributor lost the rights to it, and it was a 10-year clause. But uh, Showtime got this movie mm-hmm. for a year, and it had a cult following, and weird people would hit me up, including Dave Navarro, who became like a fan of mine. Yeah. And I was always a fan of his, but every time I'd see Dave Navarro, he would be with one of our friends, yeah. and he'd be like, "Piss off!" I'd see him at the Playboy Mansion, piss off. Yeah, you know, he'd be talking to Monique Alexander or Cindy or whoever, and fuck you. And then one day, I'm hosting the X Biz Awards with Jesse Jane, mm-hmm. and I'm backstage, and Dave Navarro comes over, KB, KB, and I turn over, he's like, "I love your movie, bro," and I'm like, "Who put you up to this, man?" He's like, "No, man, I saw it last night. That was that you, right? American Cannibal." And I'm like, yeah, are you sure? Come on, who put you up this? My brother tell you to say that? And yeah. He's like, no, bro, here's my number. Take my number down. Wow. I, I really want to talk business with you. I want to put out my own documentary about my mom's killing on the West Side. Oh, Which wow. he did. Which eventually, he did, yeah. Morning Sun, which is a great doc. Um, 
as fate would have it, a week goes by and somebody tries to shot me a sex tape of Dave Navarro. Wow. And I had his number, so of course the first thing I do is I hit him up. I'm like, bro, you're going to be so happy that you gave me your number. Yeah. Do you remember doing a movie where you're dressed as a woman in full makeup and getting flogged tied to a tree? And he gets quiet <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, I even did the soundtrack to that. I go, what's up? Because I was so fucked up on heroin, bro. I'm like, well, look, here's the chick who's trying to sell it. This is what I think you should do. We could shut it down. Yeah. And I became his best bud after that, boy. Wow. Yeah. I actually have a great Dave Navarro story. So <clears throat> I was a huge Jane's Addiction fan growing yeah, me up. Too. Like they defined yep. my teenage years. Me like too. 100%. It's actually funny. I downloaded Nothing Shocking oh. again last week and started listening to it. Oh, it's the best because album. I hadn't heard it in so long. Best album. Did you just post about that album? Yes. That's why I did it because I saw it, I think, yeah. on Facebook and I was like, fuck, I haven't watched that. Uh-huh. And it's, you know how you, when you listen to something that you listen to a lot to at one period of time, it brings back all those memories. Yeah. So I was like, I kind of want to relive like my teenage years again. And and listen to this album. So and good. So good. So anyways, um, I was in, I was about 12 or something like that and I was in Westwood and I was with a friend of mine and we were just like, you know, shopping in the little Westwood area. Mm-hmm. Um, this is God, this is when it was so different and he was there. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's Dave Navarro. And I was like, what do I say? I was so excited, but yeah. I was so embarrassed and I was so nervous. So finally I went up to him like a fucking idiot. I said to him, I go, hi, uh, you look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? And he's like, oh, well, I'm in this band called Jane's Addiction. I'm like, oh my God, I know. I love you so much. You're my favorite. <laughs> and he was like, I thought you didn't like know who I was. I'm like, I was just too embarrassed. Oh my God, you're my favorite. I love you so much. And he was really sweet to me. Yeah, he's sweet to girls. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then, coincidentally, it's the craziest thing. A week later, I'm on Melrose. And I'm shopping on Melrose. And I walk past the store. And I fucking see him inside the store. Again. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's Must Dave- have been fate. Maybe Dave- you were destined to be with Dave Navarro. Is that what <laughs> there- you're thinking in your head? Wow, there's, there's, there's going to be something to this. I don't I was. 12. I was like, you know, I didn't know. And I was like, Did oh he my show God. you his penis and ask you to suck it? He did not. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Okay. And so I go in there and I'm like, okay, I got to say hi. I got to say hi. And so I go in there. I'm like, hi. I'm like, I know this is really random, but I don't know if you remember me. We met last week. And he goes, yeah, Holly. Oh my God. He, I, he remembered my He remembered my name. Wow. Because I had told him that. That's impressive. He remembered my name. He gave me a big hug. He was like trying on different shirts. And he was like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Just being like super nice to me and yeah. just giving me attention because you could wow. tell I was a super fan. And he liked that. It was so sweet. And like yeah. honestly, that meant so much to me at that uh. age. It really, really, and that stuck with me forever. I was like, Dave Navarro remembered me. So then, um, and I would hear his name, you know, frequently, obviously, because I know he's dated a lot of girls in the industry. Yeah. So I, but I'd never seen him again. And yes. then finally, I was shooting for Penthouse, and they were doing that Hot Shots thing, mm. where they would have um, a celebrity come in and like art direct a shoot as to mm-hmm. what they thought was sexy. And I was the photographer for the Dave Navarro one, so I was like, oh, oh my god, this is crazy, it's full circle. Yeah. So, anyways, I meet him on set. I told him the story, which of course he loved. He did. Um, also, too, it made him look. Re- I made him look really good in front of a bunch of people. Right. Like, made him look like someone who like made it. 12 year old girl's dreams come true. You He's know? a sweetheart of a guy. He yeah, really no, he is. was. Nice. And so the rest of the day, he was super nice. And um, I had a great, great time with him. We shot this incredible stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, that was my Dave Navarro story. It's pretty I, cool. He actually hooked me up because a couple years later, um, somebody brought something to me regarding Slash, of all people. And I oh, am yeah. such a huge Slash and Guns N' Roses fan. And I called him up one day. I'm like, hey, are you friends with uh, Slash by chance? Mm-hmm. This girl's trying to sell him out and I think it's kind of a bad deal and you know what I do and he's like listen I don't even want to know what it is but I'm going to tell him to call you yeah I'm going to tell him you're a good guy and I'm in my bedroom playing guitar a couple of hours later and all of a sudden the phone rings it's an 818 number and I'm playing my guitar so I'm not really paying attention it's like hey KB it's uh it's Rash I, I go what it's Ross I'm like Ross I thought he was a guy who worked for sex search at the time he goes no Navarro's friend I go what? And at that point, I literally took my guitar off and threw it across the room. <laughs> He's like, bro, you playing guitar? I'm like, listen, what I'm doing can't even be called playing guitar yeah. next to what you do. Okay, yeah, yeah, You yeah. play guitar, I just sit here and look good with it. Yeah. So uh, he starts asking me questions. He's like, so what's going on? And I tell him his whole story. And he's like, oh, yeah, this girl's just stalking me and she's a bad person and this and that. Anyway, 
we've became friends because of this thing. And, and again, if it wasn't for Navarro probably going, hey, KB's cool. Yeah. You know, he probably never would have called me. But we yeah. literally became friends. And to this day, you know, I'll tweet with him and, and, and we'll DM each other. And, you know, it's all jokes. And it's, it's not fan groupy love. It's more like, hey, man, he's just a cool guy. Yeah. So, like, through what I do for a living, I have met some sweethearts and I've met some really bad people too. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, if you just treat people the way that you want to be treated and you don't act like they're anything big, like, look, celebs are ubiquitous out here. You mm-hmm. and I meet them or see them every day. Right. There's not a day that goes by that I don't see somebody who, especially where I live, mm-hmm. you know, in Hollywood, I would see, you know, maybe Steven Tyler. I would have these people you'd see all the time, like Jane Lynch. Everywhere I went, there was Jane Lynch because she lived up the street from me. <laughs> right. or, uh, the other one was, um, what's his name? Um, Richard Lewis. I see Richard Lewis all the time, and I'm such a Curb Your Enthusiasm fan. Right. And he cracks me up. So we became friendly. Steve Carell now lives in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I see him every day. So it's not a big deal. You yeah. know, when you first move here, it's the, probably the coolest thing. And you grew up here, too. So you, you, you're, yeah. you know, you went to school with probably uh, Tom to s- Petty's kid, right? I did. I saw yeah. you, you posted about yeah, Tom Petty. Yeah, I went Petty. to school with Adrian Petty. He used to, and we took drama together. So he used to come to all of our plays. And you went to school with the, the kid from Incubus, that, or all of Incubus. I went to, yeah, Incubus went to Calabasas High. We saw Brandon Boyd at uh, Hollywood Bowl. Mm-hmm. It's Sarah's favorite, by the way, is oh, Incubus. Really? And man, uh, I'll tell you, the minute he starts singing, you have to put up yellow cones everywhere because there's, it, it's become so slippery with the girls that they all become wet as fuck. Honestly. I've never seen anything like it in, in my life. In high school, he was fucking gorgeous. He was. Oh, my God. I mean, he was a god in high school. Well, what is he now? Like, he still is. <laughs> He's still pretty good I mean, looking but dude. He, he had long blonde hair. And I just remember, like, every girl was just, like, so into him. He was just, like, untouchable, even in high school. Oh. And I was really good friends with his brother, Jason. Wow. Um, My life would be so much different <laughs> if I looked like Brandon Boyd. Right? You know that? Yeah. I mean, he was, just, but he was also always really, really nice. But it was funny, the one, the guy that I had a crush on ever since like my freshman year was not Brandon, was Jose, the drummer. Oh, Jose really? Padilla, because I love, wow. I'm, I'm Linda Latin men. And That's I had, new to me. I had, yeah. <laughs> I know. I always end up dating super white guys, yeah. but I actually have a thing for Latin guys. With weird names. <laughs> yeah. But what was the ex's name, the, the guy that worked for, um, Splash. Oh, Tom. Oh, that was a normal name. Yeah. Why do I think he had a weird name too? I don't know. Okay, well. His last name was different, I guess. Yeah. Oh, fuck all these guys. They're, <laughs> not, they're not in your life anymore. No. Well, I mean, we're, we're friendly. I'm friendly with everybody pretty much. There's only oh. one person that I'm not friendly with anymore who used to work for Wicked. I don't know if you remember that guy. Remember Aaron? Oh, my God. Yeah. He's the one that took him. Yeah. yeah. That was a bad deal. Yeah, it was a bad deal. You dated deal. him? Yeah. Wow. For like a year. He treated me like shit. I was Ugh. 22. He was 33, 34. Life's he, too short to be treated He was like, like that was honestly the only guy I've ever gone out with who treated me like fucking shit, made me cry all the time. Wow. I don't know. Looking back, of course, I'm like, why did I put up with that? But every mm. other guy I've dated has been really nice. He was just, he was the only guy that was a real shit. Uh, it depends on the day, but Sarah will tell you I'm an asshole some days too. <laughs> I really try my best. You know what? When you live with somebody, like, relationships are difficult. Yeah. They're not easy. Mm-hmm. And you know, people always, I went home for my 30th high school reunion, for instance, and I mean, everybody loved peaches. First of all, I'm talking to frumpy 48 year old women. The first girl I ever finger banged uh, at one point was standing and talking to Sarah. Yeah. In the corner of the room, and I'm going, wow, this is like my life. This is like yeah. Kevin Blatt, this is your life. And I come over at one point, and you know, Sarah's got a cocktail in her hand, which she often does. Uh-huh. Um, and I see four to five girls that I went to high school with standing around her, and they're all standing with their mouth agape, listening to her. Yeah. So I come over because I'm just, I got to know what she's talking to these girls right. about. So I look at Stretch and Gretchen. <laughs> who's the girl that I finger banged in eighth grade in the closet? Wait, why does she have that name? <laughs> well, because she was a hoe, and her name was Gretchen, and we called her Stretch and Gretchen. <laughs> of course, now she's like this pill addled you know, Prozac and oh, opiate. Oh my God. No, I shouldn't say that. She could be, oh shit, she'll probably listen to this. If I plug this. That's okay. Whatever. It's all right. Whatever. Anyways, Sorry, Stretch and Gretchen. So, no, so everybody back in Ohio is pill addled. That's what I say. You know, opiates. Yeah. Everybody's on opiates or something. Yeah. Who knows what she's on? But anyway, she's sitting there talking to, to, to Sarah. And uh, I come over and I go, What are you ladies talking about? And Gretchen looks over to me. She goes, Your fiance is such a, a, a ray of light. And she's so incredibly honest. She's telling us that if we sell our panties online, we could probably get 50 <laughs> to $75 a pair. She's not, un- that's not untrue. And I go, 
Well, okay. I go, what else did she tell you? Like, well, she told me that there's balloon popping fetishes and mm-hmm. uh, uh, that we're really listening to the SPH thing right now. And I go, SPH? And Sarah goes, you know, small penis humiliation, KB. Of course. I'm like, you're teaching these Midwestern housewives about SPH in webcamming. She's there trying to recruit girls to go on cam and do what she does. Yeah. But she doesn't realize these girls are my age, right. from number one and number two. They are just like, you know, they're all secretly wishing they could be Sarah. Yeah. You know, and they're looking at her body and they're looking at her. And she's just, like I said, she's a ray of light. I mean, there was one guy I went to high school with who had Down syndrome. And, you know, he's sitting in the corner, Pat Fife. And I've known this kid since third grade. Mm -hmm. You know, and I go, Pat, come over here. So Pat comes over to the table. Sarah starts giving him love. And then she starts calling over all the other girls and take pictures with the guy. Brings him on the dance floor and starts dancing with Pat. It made this guy's night. And everybody Aww. there was just sitting at, you know, sitting around the dance floor going, wow, you know, your girl is someone who's really special. Oh, that makes me want to cry. That's Sarah, though. Yeah, she, she's, she's so sweetheart. warm and so genuine and so caring and so loving. And she treats I mean, she's so good to me. Yeah. You know? She, she drives me literally insane. Don't, yeah. get, don't get me wrong. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's what we do to the people that we love. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I love her. You know, yeah. I drive her probably more insane, though. Yeah. Because of my Jewish neurosis. <laughs> I'm worse than Richard Lewis. It's like living with Richard Lewis, but different. <laughs> but uh, no, the 30th high school reunion, I highly recommend you go to it because you will be blown away. And a lot of people move far away from California mm-hmm. and they don't look back, right? Right. People you grew up with are like, ugh. It's actually funny how many people that I went to high school with who still live in Calabasas. Well, like I a would, lot of them. Listen, it's have Calabasas. Not left. It's Calabasas, though. Yeah. Like, if you grew up in Ohio, you would never, ever want to stay in Ohio. Yeah. And if you stay in Ohio, there's something keeping you there, some magical force, or you're so close with your family right. that you can't go anywhere else. Right. Look, I've been out here 21 years. It's hard to believe that. Yeah. But um, I never look back. You know, my parents told me, I'll miss you, but you got to live your life. Don't get stuck in this town. I mean, look, if I would have impregnated the first girlfriend I had or. Mm-hmm. You know, something would have kept me selling aluminum siding in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck I'd be doing right now. Yeah. None of this would ever have happened. I wouldn't have met my fiance. I wouldn't have had this Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian thing happen. Right. And I wouldn't be making my living, you know, selling and working amongst A list stars. Yeah. I'd become friends with A list celebrities. <laughs> I'm like, how did that happen? I was just a porn guy a couple of years ago yeah. and I made no money in the business. Isn't it crazy? Now I'm at a party with you? Robert Downey Jr. talking about like, Weird shit. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy town. Yeah, it is. It is. I love it, though. I mean, I, I can't see where else I could live. I mean, I love San Diego. And when I met you know, Amy Sweet and John mm-hmm. lived down the street from me, good yeah. friends of ours, Yep, it was a different life. Yeah. You know, now that I'm up here, it's like, whoa. I know. There's a part of me that, I mean, sometimes when I go, like I was just in Bend, actually, for a wedding at the beginning of this month. Um, oh, we got to talk about Arkansas. Yes, we do. Are we out of time? We're we not do. out of time. No, we're not out of time. All right, time. we can keep going. We're not out of time. I have another guest coming at... Um, Who's the other guest? Uh, Jalissa Lynn uh, at one. Yeah, she's not going to be here for 45 is minutes. Is she hot? She's super hot. So it's worth looking at her. Yeah, and she's this... I mean, you talk about friendly and warm and yeah. lovely and sweet and genuine. Jalissa is that girl. She's so... And Jalissa. she's an incredible ass. What color is she? Um, she's, Puerto, she's part Puerto Rican, part white. Okay. So... Oh, right. So just going back to finish the thought that I had. Yes. So I went, we went to Bend, and which is we've, we've been to a few times because my boyfriend's what best is Bend? friend lives out there. Bend, Oregon. Oh, Bend, Oregon. Okay. Yeah. And so my boyfriend's best friend uh, recently moved out there. Mm-hmm. And so we've been there a couple of times, and we went out for his wedding. And it's just such a cool town, you mm. know? And it's small, um, but it's also like it's cool, you know. It's one like one of those cool small towns, right? Um, it's more progressive than a lot of Oregon is. Okay, um, but um, so in in my boyfriend really eventually wants because he's like a mountain man, right? Oh. I mean, he looks like one. Well, he's, he's got the lumberjack. He's look. got the lumberjack look. Right. Yeah, but he loves hiking. He loves fishing. He loves hunting. Like he's into all that shit. Wow. Right. It's so the opposite of me. The opposite of me. Yeah. That's like a real man. He's he is a real man. It's <laughs> actually really funny, like how much of a real man he is. It it makes me laugh. He doesn't do pedicures, does he? Actually, yes, sometimes. Mm. See, I, I got he's, on that kick for a little bit, but I won't do that anymore. Yeah, I got some kind of fungus on my toenail, and, oh I, and I'm convinced it's from 
pedicure. Really? Studio I've been City. getting pedicures all my life and I've never gotten that. Man, I got sensitive feet, but I got <laughs> something going on in my fucking toe right now. And I'm like, <laughs> shit, they used to make fun of my dad for having corn chip nails and stuff. Now I got a corn chip nail. And I'm like, God damn it. It's that Sometimes little it Vietnamese happens. woman did this to me. <laughs> So tell me about Ben. So he, the mountain man wants to live there someday. Is well, I think saying? he actually wants to live in Montana. That's kind of oh. his dream. And sometimes a part of me is like, I think I would like that. No, you, know, you I like think people that, that too would, much. Like that people. would be nice because it's quiet, it's beautiful, no. the traffic. But I agree. I think You're not I would Danny get bored. Ash. You're not Danny Yeah, Ash. I know, right? <laughs> did she move to Ben? Where did she move? I she moved to Montana. Montana. She did move to Montana. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I would get really bored. Yeah, also, too, my family is out here. My whole family is here in LA. That would be really hard for me to move away from my family. Listen, family is something that the older I get, the more important it gets to me. Absolutely. And Twenty years ago, when I moved, you know, my dad was remarried. Uh, my mom was going through a divorce. They were all in their own heads and dealing with their mm-hmm. own shit. So my brother and I were like, "Look, I can't go through another one of these winters. Yeah, it's like, let's get in the car and go out west because we could do the same shit we're doing here yeah. in San Diego mm-hmm. and not freeze our asses off." Mm-hmm. You know, mom and dad will still be there when we want to see them. And of course, you know, my gra- I lost my grandparents while I lived out here. Um, you know, life moves on, surgeries, things, whatever. You, you go back and forth and you visit. Mm-hmm. But now my dad's getting older. He's got the beginnings of dementia. My mom just had back surgery, so I had to go home for her back surgery. Yeah. So now you feel like the distance. Yes. I feel that 2,500 miles. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, you're very blessed to have your family right up the street from you. Yeah. And not really up the street. Because of yeah. traffic out here, but, right? But but they're here, and yes. they're here for you. And if you need them, yes, they're healthy. Yeah. You're not going wood. Yeah, they're pretty healthy. My yeah. dad's been uh, he had some health issues the last couple of years, um, but for the mo- he's doing a lot better now. My How's mom, your mom? She used to be a thing. nurse, as you know. So right. now she so she's all over him and making sure he takes his medication. Good, and stuff like that, good. So. Um, she's good. Um, so. Yeah, for those of you listening who didn't know, my mom got kicked in the face by a horse a couple of years ago on her birthday, actually, literally on her birthday. Oh my God. Um, and she lost. Horrible. Yeah, and so she, the left side of her face was crushed and she Ugh. lost her eye. Um, but that hasn't slowed her down at all. I mean, Not she still all. rides like four horses a day, wow. competes. Jesus. Like, I mean, honestly, it hasn't slowed her down. Not a bit. Shit. If a horse did that to me, I don't think I'd ever go near a horse again. No, she. Uh, my mom goes to the hospital like once a year for horse injuries. Wow, she doesn't care. It's her she life. She just gets back up on that horse. She she she, def- <laughs> she literally gets right back up on that horse. Wow, nothing scares that woman. Well, it's that's inspiring. Crazy. Yeah, that's inspiring. Yeah. Um. So you, you listen. You're not moving to Bend, Oregon. This no, LA needs you not? too much. <laughs> There's not that many good photographers that do what you do. I don't know. I feel like there's a some there's more. There's two. There's two of them. There's, there's you and there's Dean Capture. Yeah. Right? And then people will tell you, eh, they're not the same. Yeah. But like I said, the whole time I was in the industry, there was you and there was everybody else. Aww. Everybody would be like, because all the girls would be like, oh, I can't wait to shoot for Holly Randall. Aww. It was a big deal. It was like a rite of passage to be able to shoot for it's you so or your mother. It's funny. It's, it's weird to Everybody hear. hated Earl Miller. So it was well, either well, you he, You know what he Susan. does now, right? No, I need to know. Oh, you don't know? I need to know. Dude, he's a cat photographer. Makes sense. I am not he kidding. He was a crazy cat guy. I am not kidding you at all. He is a cat photographer. He shoots like cats, like posing with motorcycles you know, and like cat birthdays. He's a little and, out like, there. He's cat, a little out like, there. Yeah, he's he went from and of oh. course one has to make this joke. He went from shooting pussy to shooting pussy. Do you know that when he became a client of mine years ago when I worked um, in Game Link, at Game Link? Okay. And, uh, Again, for those of you guys who don't know, because we tend we go yeah, back we, we in jump history all over the place. and we forget that people don't necessarily know what we're talking right. about. Earl Miller was a very famous penthouse photographer back in the, in yes. the day, working for Bob Guccione. In fact. It was later on when he became a client of mine that I was going through his stuff at, underneath all the cat fucking, you know, those rug things, those stands with the cats. You know what I'm talking cat about? Cat scratching the, posts? Yes. Yeah. He had like 12 of these things. I have horrendous allergies to cats. <laughs> and these cats would be sitting there and I'd be just like dripping with all sorts of mucus. And I'm going through this penthouse pet thing and I go, oh my God, did you shoot this cover? And he goes, yeah, I shot this whole thing. It was the first thing I ever whacked off to as a kid. I stole my dad's penthouse magazine. Uh I was like 12 or 13. Uh And there was something about this photo spread of this girl shaving this guy's balls. First of all, I'd never seen a guy ever get shaved before. And I didn't find it highly erotic. But the girl who was doing the shaving was so hot. And it was a 70s like 
Late seventies, early eighties. I don't think I've ever seen one where a girl was shaving a guy's genitals. I've yeah. seen like the girl shaving another girl's genitals. Yeah, that no, was no. actually kind of like a big fetish. This was a big deal though back then in the seventy nine, eighty or wow. whatever it was. And yeah. I remember just this was something was so hot about this chick and it was like permanently like embedded in my head. So when I saw it, I was like, Earl, you shot this? I go, Yeah. So years later he signed an, an autograph that issue and gave mm-hmm. it to me. Um, I would go over his house. He started taking me to follow your heart out in Canoga Park because he ate really healthy and would take all these vitamin supplements and he was Mm -hmm. really out there. And we became kind of friendly and I liked Earl for a little while. He was a little strange. Mm -hmm. A little strange. Yeah. Met this girl he was in love with and he moved to Vegas. Yeah. Sold his house. Yeah. Never heard a thing about Earl Miller again. Yeah. Yeah. He's He's a cat photographer. He's a cat photographer. Good for him. He's got nine lives, that guy. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? As long as he's doing what makes him happy. Listen. That's all that matters. Let's go back to happier things. Let's let, let's talk about fun things like this wedding in Arkansas. Okay. That you and I were invited to. Yes. I was supposed to attend uh, Danny Daniels. Yes. And our friend Vic got yes. married. Yes, they did. Uh, now, Arkansas, wasn't that wasn't the reason why I didn't want to go. Right. I was supposed to have back surgery, but didn't happen. I've never been to Arkansas. So you I have, have never to either. tell me what that was all about. Is that where she's from? No, her family, she has family there. Oh, like okay. her grandparents. So were she there. wasn't raised in Arkansas. No, no, no. She was raised in California. And what was Arkansas like? It was well. It was in the Ozarks, so it was really pretty. Uh-huh. Um, it, we definitely stuck out like a sore thumb. All you of weren't us inbred. porn stars there. <laughs> oh, porn stars! So like me, Cherie Deville, we uh-huh. were in the wedding. Um, Katrina Jade came. Mm-hmm. Um, who else was there? Oh, Kendall Carson was there. I don't know any of these girls. So That's Katrina, how far out of the loop I am. Yeah, though. Katrina's uh, kind of new. She's mm-hmm. um, she won Female Performer of the Year last year at AVNs. She's mm. insanely beautiful. Okay. Um, so yeah, there was a bunch of us us porn girls there. Did you throw the whole bridal thing for her, or the um, was there a party? Or I was a bridesmaid. Oh, okay. but I didn't organize any of it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so it was really cool too because she had an uneven number of grooms and bridesmaids, and so she just had everyone wear tuxes. That's interesting. So we all wore tuxes. You wore a tux. I wore a tux. Oh my! Which God. honestly was like the most comfortable bridal outfit I've ever been in. It was well, kind of awesome. Yeah, you didn't have to like. Yeah. You just had to drop your pants, and you were able to go to the bathroom. Yeah, and exactly. Have to take off your whole no, outfit. No, and when we got back to the uh, wedding venue, I was able to like put on like I had some nice like slip on sneakers oh. that like you couldn't tell that I was wearing with really? the t- tux, so I didn't have to wear heels all night. It was fucking great. What kind of hotel did you stay in? Uh, we actually stayed in a house. She rented a house oh. for us in Bella Vista, like a big like five bedroom house. So I stayed in that house. Where did Mo stay? Mo was there. I saw Mo. Yeah, Mo from Expos was there. Yeah. I I think he stayed at a hotel room. Interesting. He didn't. He didn't stay with us <laughs> in Arkansas. Was it was in Little Rock. What, what part no, it was in uh, like it was in uh, Bentonville. Oh my god! Yeah, this is the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so it was funny because there's lit- no Jews in Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> Literally, every single Uber driver was like, "Where are y'all from?" Because especially like <sighs> our telling our stories in the car. Oh yeah, you know. And and my boyfriend the whole time was like, "You guys," because he's like the only person who like lives in the real world. Yeah, you guys are all desensitized. Yeah, and it, we're so desensitized. And he's like, "You guys can't <laughs> talk about this in front of these people." And we're like, "Why not?" This is like the mo- and actually a bunch <laughs> of the Uber drivers. Said to us, they were like, "You're the most interesting people we've had in our car." One Ever. Of the, one of the guys gave me his card and was like, "Can I just drive you around everywhere while you're here and listen to your stories?" Yeah. Well, and he actually recognized me from Hot Girls Wanted. Are you serious? Yeah. Which I didn't know. Like, I never get recognized from that. I didn't know people watch Playboy Channel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a few. I used to watch it. Well, you know Hot Girls Wanted was on Netflix, right? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're thinking of my Playboy TV show, right, 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 which right. was Adult Film School. Right. Yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, right. that was a lot of fun. Okay, so I had the other a lot thing, of fun doing that. Okay, so, so Hot Girls Wanted was Netflix. the Netflix documentary that I did with Rashida Jones, right? Which everyone in the adult industry loved so much. <laughs> Wait, I was just going to say that's what got panned by everybody, and they're all mad, and they were like, "Oh, they're, don't talk to Rashida Jones." Yeah, she, she all, fucked everybody. They're all mad, but I'm not mad. I love my episode. I love Rashida Jones. Yeah. I had a fucking great experience. Hey, listen, let the buyer beware. Caveat on tours, they say. Like, yeah, anytime you're doing with press, and I deal with them every day. They're going to slant things. Of course they that are. That doesn't mean it's fake news, by the way. Yeah. That means that they will change the narrative mm-hmm. for their audience. Yeah. So, of course, Hot Girls Wanted, they're going to show the girls and they're going to show how you could be empowered 
Mm-hmm. You working out of your own you know, bedroom, you could mm-hmm. be your own boss. But of course, they're going to show the downside of it too. They're going to show why you ended up doing what you're doing. That's the thing. And I got lucky because my episode was like the female empowerment episode. Good. So mine was really positive. Right. And everybody, actually, it was funny because I remember when it first came out, I had a whole bunch of people tweeting at me, porn stars and everything, yeah. saying like, I'm so glad Hot Girls Wanted got it right this time because, you know, they had the first episode. Mm-hmm. And this was the second. Yeah, the, the first second, one was bad. They, right. Yeah. And, you know, and it's female empowerment and, you know, this is great, blah, blah, blah. Blah, good mm-hmm. job, Rashida Jones. And then as people started watching all the up the episodes, the the tone changed completely, and people uh, were like, "Oh, fuck, all girls wanted." Blah blah blah. But you Which, didn't get any negative fallout from it, right? No, no, no. no. I, my episode was fine. Um, I did get some people that kind of gave me shit for not standing in solidarity with everybody else who hated it. Whatever. But I'm like, look, I'm I can only speak from my own experience. I understand like some other people had bad experiences. I get it. I sympathize with them. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna jump on you know the like lynch mob bandwagon just sure. because everybody else wants me to like I had a great experience um, also too my episode was the only one that Rashida actually directed oh. she didn't direct any of the other episodes that's probably she was better the producer yeah, yeah. Oh, she had a very specific agenda she really wanted to show female empowerment in the adult industry through that mm-hmm. episode um, which I, I, I think she did and I I, I have to watch it. Loved it I yeah, never you should watched see it, it. I watched really the, first, the first the uh, first the, the first, first one. episode, yes. which wasn't very good. No. And I didn't like it. it Sarah and I turned it off. We're it like, you know, this sucks. It wasn't inaccurate, though. Is Bailey Rain in this one? Yes, she's okay. in episode three. Because this, this, ser- <laughs> this is a series of um, six six different episodes. By the way, Bailey, if you are listening to this, one of these days, the three of us are going to get together. There's no Bailey. doubt about that. I met her at the AVN party with Sarah a couple years ago for the yeah. Halloween party. And she's the cutest, she's the cutest. sweetest. She does make. She handles all my social media now. I hired. Does her. she really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's the cutest little thing, and you know, she's she always saying how we should get together. And if you're listening, uh, we're right up the street from you, Bailey. You should call us and yeah. hang out. Bailey's great. Yeah. I love her. Um, so, anyways, back to Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas. <laughs> I got to hear this. Okay. okay. So I got I got this story, and then we got to wrap it up. Yes. I do have another girl coming in, and I still have With to eat my, ass. my salad. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, with chopsticks. <laughs> you no, know, I just eat the hot flaming hot Cheetos with chopsticks. So I don't yeah. get it on my fingers. Which, by the way, for the graphic, was so smart for you people listening at home. Well, actually, you could see the video. I forgot we're being shot here. But uh, yeah, I come in and Holly is eating Doritos out of a bag with chopsticks, which I think is ingeniously clever. <laughs> so I don't get my fingers dirty. That was genius. So, okay, so we're in Arkansas, we're right? In Arkansas. And the bachelorette, bachelor parties combined, and we're taking a party bus to like a shitty strip club in <laughs> Missouri, right? And I am so unhappy about this idea <sighs> because I don't drink. I'm right. sober, right? Um, you hate I hate naked girls. Well, I just don't like strip clubs. It's like work. Who does? You know, and I knew it was just going to be a bunch of like super skanky chicks and it was just, everyone's going to be hammered and I was going to be <laughs> stuck on this party bus till God knows when. You can't leave. Yeah, and there's no, like, I can't get a fucking Uber. It's like an like, Amway meeting in the middle of the Ozarks. Yeah, it's just like, there's, I'm just <laughs> trapped on this party bus. And, but, you know, I'm going to do it for Danny because I love her. She's one of my best friends and I'm just going to shut my mouth and I'm going to have a good time or at least <laughs> pretend to have a good time because it's her wedding. So we go to this club and it's like in what looks like a warehouse and we walk in and the first thing that happens is there's some hick guy in there because the place is completely dead. Uh, we walk in, there's like 70 of us. Oh my God. It was huge. There was a lot you of You made us. their rent for the next two years. Literally one of the strippers told Cherie DeVille that that was the best night they'd had in two years. <laughs> So we walk in and it's pretty dead. Yeah. And this guy turns around and he goes, look at all these yanks from New York and these bleeding heart liberals from California. Oh I'm getting the fuck out of here. And he just like leaves. So I'm okay. like, okay, great. You know, this is the kind of crowd that, that I'm dealing with. Sure. He's going to go to his Confederate statue and, and uh, right. hang out. I know, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we get there. I get a water. And then I go <laughs> and, I, and I sit by the stage and... Um, there's so actually before the 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 um, redeeming story comes around, I have this <laughs> other one. So this this really the stripper that nobody wants a lap dance from comes over, right? Because there's a lot of very questionable girls in there. There are some oh. girls who's got who have such big guts that they don't even take their shirts off. They just like unzip it and kind of pull their tits out and like half heartedly play <laughs> with them. It's just like really really sad. And so this girl comes over 
And um, she's like, you know, dancing and no one's really tipping her because she's gross and she clearly doesn't want to be there. And we're sitting there with, which, with a bunch of girls, but Danny is not there. <laughs> and there was these two girls that were like very, very shy uh-huh. and obviously feeling very out of place. And so the girl says to us, the stripper, she says, what are you all here for? Are you all here for a bachelorette party? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we're here for... She's like, who's getting married? Is it this girl? And she points to like this one girl that's sitting there looking terrified. Mm-hmm. And the girl's like, no, she's not. No, I'm not getting married. And I say, yeah, yeah, she is. That's that's the girl. That's the bride. Because I'm like trying to get this girl to give her a lap dance, which she on. really, really doesn't want. Of course. And so the stripper says, she, all of a sudden she goes... You shouldn't even be getting married. You don't need a man. I got two kids, two trucks, and a house. I don't need a man. He's just going to take it all away from me. And then she stands up, clicks her triple heels together, and just storms off. It was so random. Jesus. And I just, like, we all just looked at each other. We're like, did that just really happen? I'm envisioning, like, the Star Wars cantina, by the way. Like, yeah, when you're talking about literally like, what it was like. The girls with three tits yeah, and a and, gut. Yeah, and so the rest of the time we're just like, I got two kids, two trucks, and a house. I don't need a man. That was the theme of the rest of that the bridal. That was the theme of the rest okay. of the bridal shower. That <laughs> and this next story. Uh-huh. So... Then this cute blonde girl comes out, right? And I'm like looking at her. I'm like, this girl does one something here does not belong here. And that's this girl. She has no tattoos, uh-huh. all natural, super fucking cute. Wow. And she's dancing. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, wait, for real? And I said to her, and I'm like, hey, I shoot for Playboy. I want to shoot you. And she just like whips her head around and looks at me. I'm like, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I'm like, come here. And I take my <laughs> business card and I stick it in her thong. And I'm like, that's worth more than all the dollar bills that just got thrown on the stage right now. Wow. And I'm like, you call me. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, do you have any tattoos under like, because she was wearing like these thigh high socks. She's like, no, I have no tattoos. I'm like, oh my fucking God, you have no tattoos. She's like, and I just turned 18. I'm like, oh, this is the best. Because it's more like... I mean, obviously, I do want to shoot her for Playboy, but there's a part of me that just wants to, for once, find a girl who just turned 18 and give her the right advice and show her the right way to do it before she gets hooked up with some sleazy agent, some shitty boyfriend that gets her hooked on to meth, and Mm -hmm. she gets 20 shitty- Before someone jacks off on her. Yeah, (laughs) some 20 (laughs) shitty tattoos and five kids. And I'm like, I want to take this girl, and I want to like- guide her and mm-hmm. just and I don't want a fucking piece of it or anything like that I just want to like show her that she could do this the right way and she could control her own career and she could change her life right get get her out of Bentonville get her get her out of <laughs> well we were in Missouri at the point we were at uh, wow. hot hots hots I guess the show me state yeah right exactly <laughs> so um so the rest of the trip we're all just like laughing about how I'm gonna save this stripper right. and I'm like I'm gonna save this stripper I'm gonna save her and it just it became a big <laughs> thing the whole wedding party became like completely involved in this and everyone's asked me they're like are you gonna save the stripper we want to know captain and so like save a ho. yeah captain save mm-hmm. a hoe over here so she did finally um reach out to me a couple of days ago and I gave her all the information See, you, you and really are waiting a whore, you're a whore whisperer I am. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna save this girl. Well, are you flying her out anytime soon? Like uh, a la Daniel Tosh, you just fly her out to California for the week. And That's do I a mean, little segment with yeah, her. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to submit her to Playboy and see if they like her, and just get some feelers out there and make sure that like they're interested before because right. it was dark in there. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, but I mean, she was really cute, and I looked at her Instagram, and, and aren't, she aren't all cute. strip clubs kind of dark though? Yes. Okay. If, yes. I and mean, having worked in them all my life before I moved to California, I can tell you there's a reason why they keep them dark. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I mean, all the other girls were a testament to that. But. When the lights would come on, it was like cockroaches. They would like scatter and get the <laughs> hell out of the strip club. And I was like, well, "What is it about these girls?" And I'd see them out in the parking lot. I'm like, "Whoa." Yeah. That's the same girl that I used to work with. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's um. That dichotomy. It's yeah. just so crazy. So what you're saying is I missed a lot in Arkansas. You did. But I should just send the gift. Yeah. Right. Which actually I think they're they're not they're only they're asking that you donate to chair to their selected charities in their name. They don't actually want gifts. Are you I know, serious? right? They have too much money. How altruistic means. is that? No, that means they have too much money. <laughs> that means that uh, she, her art's selling very well. Yeah, I know. And whatever he's doing, he's doing. You know, he sent me a box of clothes when he was working for this artistics, mm-hmm. artist X or whatever you want to call it. Last year, Sarah and I got a box 
of every single piece of clothing that this company that he was representing had, which yeah. I thought was so cool. Yeah, that is really cool. He's a very nice guy. I actually he is a very nice guy. met him in person in New York when I was there doing a deal a couple uh, months ago mm-hmm. and surprised Mo Helmy out of the clear blue. He just, uh, I said, don't tell Mo that you know me. Because mm-hmm. he told me he was meeting this guy from x I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Oh, help me. I'm like, oh, tell me where you're going to be later on. I'll walk in. I'll surprise him. And yeah. I walked in this place called the Horny Ram. <laughs> you should have seen the look on Mohan. I walked over. I go, hey, sir, do you want a fucking basket of fries with those wings? And he looks up at me. You know that look where you're like, yeah. confused? Like, wait, this guy looks like KB, but why would he be in New York City? Yeah. It was pretty fun. Yeah. I like I, to do that to people. Yeah. I love Mo. He's a great guy. Mo's well, a great guy. Yes. Uh, no homo. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a great guy. Listen, you know what? This is, I think this is your medium. Thank you. I, think, I mean, look, you're a good photographer. Thank you. You're a good friend. Thank you. But I think this could be your thing. Yeah? You you're, like it? You had a good time? You're a conversationalist. Like I said, an hour goes by too fast. Yeah. We're almost at an hour and a half, yeah. and I feel like we haven't even scratched I know. the surface. I feel like there's so many questions I want to ask you that we never got to. So we could always do a part two. We can do look, a part Look, it's better two. this way because I won't get sued. Yes. Normally I'll say shit I'm not supposed to say. Yeah, I But I will you. say... In the next week, you're going to see another director go down. Mm. A director, not a producer. Okay. You're going to see a clothing magnet go down. There's a lot of people that have some accusations flying that are behind the scenes that are just, you can't control these people. The the stories are just starting to bust loose. Yeah. And pedophilia and gay. Keep in mind, everybody hears about the casting couch. Yeah. But they don't think that there's a gay casting couch here as well. Yeah. Think about it. There's a lot of straight performers or allegedly straight performers right. that you and I watch that had to suck a little dick along the way to get in the roles that they have. Man. Which goes back to our conversation before at the urinal. Yeah. Like, if you suck one dick, you're gay. Yeah. I'm sorry. If you <laughs> suck one dick, you may as well suck them all. You're not sucking all the dicks. That's where <laughs> someone had a Twitter handle that, that was, was Danny. That's right. Danny. Uh, that's what I'm saying, man. It's just that you, you don't accidentally get drunk and suck a dick. You um, either want um, to suck a dick? Uh, well, maybe oh, you oh, did. Oh, oh, you did. Okay, because I did that a lot. Yeah, well, you. Well, but I'm now a girl, you tell me. And I like dick. Uh, we should have so, gone. I should have gone through that. There's no, that's no secret. Listen, you like dick. <laughs> we like. I like hot ass. I like good people. You know, I miss. I miss the old days. I miss all of our friends. I, I miss know. seeing our, our our mutual friends. But it's so fun to see their kids grow up. Yeah. Yeah. All these girls broke my heart at one point, mm. but it was all meant to be. Yes, so I could be where I am today. I know it's funny how sometimes when you're in it, you can't see that like that path that you're on is the path that you need to be on to reach your ultimate destiny. But I want to thank every penthouse pet that I banged for telling me at one point, "Don't fall in love with me," because they were all right. Shay yeah. Loren, <laughs> Erica, I yeah. mean, uh, Juliet, are they all said, "Look." Don't fall in love with me. Yeah. You don't want to fall in love with me. I'm yeah. not the one for you. Yeah. They all warned me. Yeah. I got my own shit going on. Don't fall in love. Right. And as much as that hurt back in the day, now I see why. Yep. And I'm so. happy for all of them with their kids. I'm happy for all of them with their, some of them remained very good looking. Yes. Which you don't see a lot of that. Yeah. Right. Like I said that 30th high school reunion was an eye opener for me. Uh, I know. Like, holy shit. 48. These I girls know. don't look like they didn't look, that girl had the hottest ass in high school. No, her ass is on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? I know, right? It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, listen. People want to get a hold of me. They could get me at Kevin Blatt uh, on Twitter, on Facebook. Google me. Be more than happy to take the content or story that you may have and turn it into some big money. You are. That's so, what I do. You are so good at this because I was literally going to close out this by saying, "Where can we find you on social well, I knew media?" You were. I was just going to, you know, interject yeah. because I knew that that's you've where done this before. This isn't mm, your first rodeo. Yeah, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> but you know what? You're better to talk to than Deborah Norville, and I love Deborah Norville. I just did a show with her on Reels, so uh, uh-huh. this is a lot. This is your medium. Yeah, well, I mean, I really try to invite people that I know and that I like and that I know I will have a good conversation with. I'm right. very, very picky about my guests. I won't just get somebody who has a big name because mm-hmm. I think that might get me numbers if I, if I don't know them. Well, if that I was the case, you would never have me on there. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this was fascinating. I mean, this is honestly like one of my more interesting interviews, and I think a lot of people are going to feel that way. This is like us having a telephone conversation after not talking for a long time. I know, and it's good know? actually that we haven't talked for a long time because we were able to catch up. Kept it fresh. Yeah. It was worth the traffic down here. Yeah. You yeah. know, in Koreatown. <laughs> I love that you're in Koreatown, by the way. Every major media like thing is right within a mile radius of here. Yeah. So yeah. No, it's a great it's You've a hit great the spot. big time. The parking just sucks. Plus you had Jennifer uh, Love Hewitt <laughs> on your show. 
<laughs> He's referring to my Holly Randall unfiltered logo where I'm, I'm looking so at it going, heavily photoshopped it looks like Jennifer Love You. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. Except the boobs aren't that, I mean, she's got the biggest boobs in Hollywood. You yes, know that? yes, wow. she does. My boobs are not that, No, your boobs look nice, big. though. They're fine. I'm, I'm just going to say they're still, still hanging in there. I'm, they they, they are still hanging in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah look, you, you should be very happy. Thank you. With how you look. Thank you. Well, everything worked out for you. Thank I'm you. I'm incredibly proud. Thank you. As I was telling Sarah, I'm like, you know what? I'm really happy to be doing Holly's show today. Yeah. I haven't seen her in a long time. She's like, just don't talk shit about me. We would ne- all we we not only do we not talk shit about Sarah, we mm-hmm. let everybody know how much we love her. How much we love her. Oh, right. We do. We love you, Sarah. We might have talked shit about Casey Jordan though. Well, yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> so I, I don't su- care. I did Superman her, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and Ooh. on that note. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Go Dodgers. Mm-hmm.